Hi there everyone and welcome to Tech Cravers. Can you believe it? It's that wonderful time of the year again. The one we've all been eagerly anticipating during the cold dark winter. The sun is shining, the birds are singing and no, I'm not talking about spring. I'm talking about, of course, a brand new Emudeck emulation tutorial. In case you missed it, Emudeck has undergone several updates since my last video. We're currently on version 2.2 or more precisely 2.2.12, as the major 2.2 update had a few fixes as well. Version 2.2 of Emudeck introduces several exciting features. Firstly, there's a new emulator frontend called Pegasus, offering an alternative to Steam or Emulation Station. Additionally, there's a new controller layout selector, improved support for Linux and a completely revamped user interface. Perhaps most importantly, Emudeck now again supports Citra and Yuzu emulators for Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo Switch respectively. While Emudeck no longer installs these emulators for you, it still simplifies the configuration process, making it easier for those who prefer not to do it manually. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's dive into how to perform a fresh install of Emudeck, how to add games along with necessary BIOS and key files, and then how to install Citra along Emudeck and configure it through Emudeck. Now let's jump into it. So in this tutorial I'm gonna uninstall my current Emudeck installation from my Steam Deck. This is because I want to start from the same point as everyone out there who hasn't yet attempted to install emulators and ROMs on their Steam Deck. For those of you who already have Emudeck installed and don't want to uninstall everything, you can simply update Emudeck to keep all your settings. It's worth noting that Emudeck will not uninstall Jusu and Citra if you already have those installed and choose to update. Okay, so with that out of the way, now that we have uninstalled and removed anything Emudeck related, it's time to redo the whole installation process from the beginning. First, I'd like to recommend having a mouse and keyboard handy for this process, as it can make things much easier. However, it's entirely possible to accomplish everything using just your Steam Deck if you prefer. So when you're ready, open your browser of choice, I use Firefox, and navigate to emudeck.com. Click on download at the top or scroll down until you reach the different versions of Emudeck available. Click on SteamOS to start the download. It will complete in just a few seconds, so when it's finished downloading, open your downloads folder and drag the file you just downloaded from your downloads folder to your Steam Deck desktop and double click on it to launch the installer. If you're prompted by a message, just click on continue and your Steam Deck will download the rest of the installer for you and then launch it. And when Emudeck has booted up, you will be prompted to choose between two options, Easy Mode or Custom Mode. Easy Mode will install everything without asking you for preferences, while Custom Mode allows us to make some decisions before installation. In this tutorial, we're feeling daring, so we'll select Custom Mode. On the next page, you have the option to choose where to install Emudeck. You can either install it on your micro SD card within your internal storage or select a custom directory such as an USB flash drive or an external SSD. This has little to no effect on performance, so choose the best place for you. I'm going with the internal storage this time. The next page is quite obvious. Select Steam Deck and click on Next. On the next page you have the opportunity to select which emulators you want to install. This depends entirely on the gaming systems you plan to emulate on your Steam Deck, and if you're unsure you can always install all of them. Remember it's easy to change this selection after the installation is complete, so don't hesitate to proceed with the installer. And if you used Emudeck before you might notice that the 3DS emulator Citra and the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu are no longer installed through Emudeck. This is due to the lawsuit Nintendo filed against the developers of those emulators. However, we can still configure those emulators using Emudeck, and I'll demonstrate that later in the video, so be sure to stick around for that. Also, if you made it this far into the video, why not drop a like on it as well? It really shares me up. On the next page you'll see a similar layout to the previous one, but here you can choose which of the installed emulators you want Emudeck to configure for you. For most users, this means selecting all the emulators you selected in the page before, however, if you have made any special tweaks to an emulator previously installed, or if you simply don't want Emudeck to configure a particular emulator for any reason, you can unselect it here. But you probably already have guessed it. You can let Emudeck configure these emulators for you later as well, should you skip them at this moment, and then change your mind. 
On the following page you have the option to enable or disable auto save states. If you choose to enable it, RetroArch will automatically save your game progress, allowing you to pick up right where you left off the next time you play. It's worth noting that this feature is only available for the systems listed on the right. Next you have the option to enter your user account for retro achievements if you have one. If not, it's recommended to get a free account from their site as it adds a nice enhancement to your retro gaming experience. With retro achievements you will earn achievements like in modern games and enhancing the replayability of your favorite classics. You also have the option to enable hardcore mode which allows you to play the game in its original format as it was released on its original system. In this mode the emulator removes the option to save states meaning you can't save your progress anywhere at any time. The next few pages are all about personal preferences. You'll be able to customize aspect ratios, choose whether to use bezels to fill out the black borders around the screen, apply filters to the display image, select controller layouts and more. Simply click your way through these pages until you reach the page about frontends. Now this is an entirely new page in the setup and it's all about choosing which frontend you want to use on your Steam Deck. A frontend is the graphical UI where you select which game you want to play. Personally on my Steam Deck I use the Steam library like 99% of the time, however on my Android handhelds I prefer Emulation Station, which I also have a tutorial for. Feel free to check it out after this if you're interested. Anyway, you can select more than one frontend and I'm going for all of them. The next two pages only show up if you choose to install both the Emulation Station frontend and the Pegasus frontend. Here you'll be able to choose a theme for each of them. Select whichever theme appeals to you and we're almost finished customizing. You'll eventually end up at this page where you'll see a summary of all your selections. If you want to change anything you can go back in the installer and make adjustments now. Alternatively you can always make changes later if you prefer that. Now let Emidec do its thing and install everything for you. If it seems like the installer has gotten stuck in a loop and isn't progressing forward, it could be because a pop-up menu has appeared behind the installer. If you notice the terminal sign flashing yellow, that's likely the cause. Simply click on it, read any prompts and select an answer if necessary. Eventually you'll end up at this page, basically telling you what you've installed up to this point. The next part of the installer will assist you in migrating any games or ROM files as well as BIOS files from your computer to the correct folders on your Steam Deck. However, I prefer to control this manually, so I always end up using drag and drop to populate my ROM folders with games. My recommendation here is to get yourself a decent external hard drive or flash drive with USB-C connection. If it has a USB-A connection, you can use one of those cheap USB-A to USB-C adapters to use it with your Steam Deck. I personally use a 2TB external drive where I store all my game backups and BIOS files. Now, a common question I receive is whether the games are free or where to find them. Unfortunately, downloading games off the internet is not legal, even if you own the original game. You need to either dump your own cartridges and CDs, I have recently published a guide on that, or you can use Google to search for assistance. Anyway, what happens next is that you plug in your external hard drive or flash drive containing your games and a menu for disks and devices will pop up and here you can click on mount and open next to whatever your drive is called. Mine is called external as you can see here. Now it's just a matter of drag and drop from your external drive to the correct folder in your EmuDeck installation folder on your Steam Deck. The easiest way is to click on open emulation folder in the installer which will open your EmuDeck installation folder and you will also get a short message telling you where to place your games. And the tab you see here named emulation is located in my Steam Deck's home folder and this is basically what EmuDeck installs for us. If you go inside the ROMs folder you will find a lot of other folders, over 150 actually, each corresponding to a specific system. So let's say you want to add a Wii U game. Then I go into my external hard drive which I have opened in the tab next to my EmuDeck installation folder and from there I simply copy the Wii U game that I want to play on my Steam Deck and place it in the Wii U folder within the ROMs folder that we found in our EmuDeck emulation folder on the Steam Deck. Or actually I just realized that Wii U games are a bit different from all other systems. They need to be placed in another folder called ROMs as you can see here. But for every other system you can place them directly under the system folder. Let me just transfer my Wii U game over here and I will show you exactly what I mean with another system. Alright, so let's copy games for another system, again from my external drive where I have all my game backups to the correct folder on my Steam Deck. So this time let's transfer my library of Nintendo 64 games instead. 
So I'm selecting my whole library and choosing to copy all files. Then I go back to the ROMs folder in my Emudeck emulation folder on my Steam Deck. Here I look for a folder named N64 and this time I simply paste all my N64 games straight into that folder. And you probably know the drill by now, so do this for every single game and system that you want to play on your Steam Deck. Simply copy and paste them into the correct folder in your Emudeck emulation folder. Once you're done migrating all your games, you can go back to the Emudeck installer, which should still be active in the background if you didn't shut it down completely before starting to migrate your games. If you did close it, you can simply launch Emudeck again from the launcher on your desktop instead. Just click on next and you will be taken to instructions on how and what to do depending on whether you want to launch your newly added games as if they were part of your Steam Deck library or if you want to launch them from a frontend like Emulation Station or Pegasus. In this tutorial I'm gonna show you what to do when you want to launch your games from Steam as I think it looks the best on a Steam Deck. So click your way through the installer until you finally reach the finish button. This will take you to the new homepage for Emudeck and this is what Emudeck will look like when you launch it from the desktop in the future. From here, either click on Steam ROM Manager in the menu to the left or maybe the installer is trying to launch Steam ROM Manager in the background because you, like me, chose that option a few pages back in the installer. And when you launch Steam ROM Manager, a message will pop up and warn you that Steam needs to be shut down in order for Steam ROM Manager to work. This is supposed to happen, so just click on Yes. Understand that your left and right mouse button will change from your trackpads to the L2 and R2 shoulder buttons instead. Don't worry, the next time you restart your Steam Deck, everything will be reverted back to normal. If you use a mouse and keyboard, however, you're not even affected by this and can simply proceed as normal. The first page in Steam ROM Manager allows you to select parsers, which essentially lets you choose which system you want to add to your Steam library so you can access your games from your Steam Deck's gaming mode. If you want to see all your systems, select all the emulators. Only those systems for which you actually have games will show up in your Steam library anyway. However, you can also select just a few if you don't want to display all of them, or just select Emulation Station or Pegasus if you plan to launch all your games from one of those frontends instead. And once you're done selecting systems, click on add games in the bottom to continue. That will take you to the next page which is simply an instruction on what you need to do next but don't worry I'll walk you through that as well. Click on parse and when you do this Steam ROM manager will automatically fetch artwork and images for each and every game that you put in the ROMs folder earlier. This will take a while depending on how many games you transferred so let it finish before you continue. This works more or less flawlessly and I'm actually not sure if it has ever failed to get artwork for me. However, you can manually configure the artwork from here as well if you want to. Just click on the arrows on the covers to swipe between a few options. You can also download specific artwork and manually choose those if you want to. I have never bothered however because I think it looks great as it is. And once you're happy with your artwork, the last step is to add the games to our Steam library. Simply click on save to Steam to start adding the games. This will take a while again and when you see the message done adding removing entries in the top right corner, you're done here. We're not quite done with Emudeck however. First of all, I need to tell you about BIOS files. Some systems require not only the game files, but also certain firmware or BIOS files. Unfortunately, just like with the game files, I can't tell you where to get these BIOS files, so you have to Google for information about it. But once you get the files, there's a handy tool in Emudeck Launcher to help you organize this. If you open BIOS Checker in the left menu, you will get to this page. The red boxes indicate that these systems, which require BIOS files to function, are missing those necessary files. So let's add the BIOS file for PlayStation 2 to the correct folder and see what happens. So I have my PS2 BIOS file here on my desktop and now I need to place it in the correct location. So I'm going to my Steam Deck's home folder, then to emulation and then to BIOS. Here I can simply drag and drop my PS2 BIOS file. And now let's take a look at the Emudeck launcher to see if anything has changed in the BIOS checker. And just like that, the BIOS checker lets me know that I now have a correct BIOS file for my PS2 emulator. Now, if you thought that was a bit messy, wait until you find out about Switch emulation. 
First of all, you need prod keys or production keys, and you also need official Switch firmware to get the Switch emulator Ryojinx working. Same as always, I can't tell you where to get these files, but if you have a modded Nintendo Switch with custom firmware, you can actually create these files yourself. But once you have the files you need, open up the Emudeck emulation folder again, go inside the BIOS folder, and this time go inside the Ryojinx folder. Drag and drop your keys files into the keys folder, replacing any file that you might have there already. Once you have done that, go ahead and launch your Ryojinx emulator. From the top menu, click on Tools and then install firmware. Select your firmware to start the installation. If you get an error here, that's because your prod keys and firmware mismatch. There are specific keys for specific firmware, but since I use my own files, I know that they match. And once done, you're now ready to play your Switch games as well. Okay, so one last thing before we can call it a day. As I mentioned, Emudeck will no longer install or contain updates for the Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra. However, it will still configure it for us if we provide the emulator ourselves. As of today, when recording this, it's still possible to simply go into Discover, which is the app store inside Steam OS, and search for Citra to download and install the emulator from there. This might change in the future, but as I said, as of today, it's still possible. So go there and download and install Citra, then go back to Emudeck, navigate to Manage Emulators and select Citra. Now you can click on Reset Configuration to have Emudex set up Citra for you. Now if you have added games to the 3DS folder inside your ROMs folder and added them to your Steam library using Steam ROM Manager, you can play your favorite 3DS games as well. And we're finally done with everything we need to do, so now head back into gaming mode to find the games you've added. Back in gaming mode, click on the Steam button on your Steam Deck and select Library. From here, go to Collections to find all the systems you've added games for through Steam ROM Manager. You can always go back and add new games and entire systems just by dragging new game files to their correct folders. But remember that you need to open Steam ROM Manager and add the games to your Steam library every time that you add new games. But we've actually just scratched the surface of what you can do with the help of Emudeck. There are numerous tweaks and enhancements to play around with once you get comfortable with it. However, I'm not a fan of long tutorials and this has already been longer than I expected, but if you want more guides for your Steam Deck, I have plenty among my other videos, so check them out when you're done, alright? Not only that, feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comment section down below, and I or some of my wonderfully helpful viewers will probably be there to help you. If this video helped you out or if you just enjoyed watching it, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future content like this. Thank you so much for sitting through this extra long video, happy gaming everyone!